begin the fourth quarter at Jordan Hare Stadium. Scott Miller, Jim Fife, and Pat Sullivan on BSN. Auburn and Georgia Tech. Auburn 14, Georgia Tech 7. Georgia Tech with the football driving. They're in Auburn territory. Have a first and 10 at the Auburn 42 yard line. Almost a replay of the first half. Auburn drew first blood. Tech came back and scored. Auburn has scored first here in the second half, and Tech again is on the march. Auburn will go on the road for the next couple of weeks. Go to Mississippi State and to Florida, back for homecoming against Southern Mississippi. Georgia comes in, and then to Birmingham and Alabama, and it's over with. One back. Drops back. Intercepted by Clifford Tony. Scott Clifford really makes a, a great play. In fact, that was the same play that what Auburn scored against Tech on. The, the outside man was uh, doing a curl pattern, and the inside man, as you can see, there's the curl pattern 82 was doing, and the outside man, uh, number seven, was trying to beat him up the sideline, and Clifford Tony just played the play real well and made the interception, and that was a big play for Auburn. Clifford Tony had the big block punt last week against LSU to give Auburn a shot. Calls it another interception. Charles Thomas, the quarterback. Willis and Brooks in the backfield. Chester Willis. Ball is loose, but after the whistle was blown, Wally Cawthon, the nose guard, in on the stop. Scott, I guess it'd be an understatement to say that uh, Auburn's game plan today was to run the football. I think in three quarters they've thrown the ball twice. Picked up a couple, second down and eight. Edwards to the left. They go to the three wide receivers again. Davis and Franklin to the right. Thomas. Fumble. Georgia Tech has the football. Thomas tried the pitch. The ball was loose, and Wally Cawthon jumped on it. Well, that's exactly what we didn't need to happen deep in Auburn territory, and we'll see what caused that fumble from our end zone Camry. Fakes to Willis on the inside handoff. Running the option, hit very hard, Pat, and well, just he, couldn't control the ball. He wanted to pitch the ball to James Brooks, and it looked like Charles was just a little bit undecided, and it's a tough break for him because he's played a great game so far today. 14-13 remaining in the game. Auburn 14, Georgia Tech 7. And here come the Yellow Jackets. Right to the left. Eggs to the right. Westbrook. Hit at the 20 yard line. Marshall Riley, the first man there. Auburn's now, going to get a personal foul here. A As late flag. Somebody lost their head down there and yeah. took a punch at one of the tech players, and that is very costly. Looked like it was Danny Skutek. He got a little flustered right there. And, uh, in fact, they're, they're replacing him right now. But uh, it, that's a real tough break for Auburn because they had tech stop. Now they're going to give him first down and move the ball up. Another 10 yards and going to give him first, first and 10 at about the 11. And I'm afraid that Skutak may have been ejected from the game, and that's a costly loss. Skutak went to the sideline. They, there you see him move the ball down to just inside the 10 yard line. First down and goal for the Yellow Jackets. 14 7, Auburn on top. 14 minutes remaining in the ball game. Etheridge, the tight end to the right, right flanker. Everybody in tight. Peoples, pass, back to Peoples. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Steve Henderson, the old quarterback at Towers High School in Decatur, Georgia, and playing fullback, took that pitch and fired a touchdown pass to quarterback Ted Peoples. Injecting some razzle-dazzle, and it well, certainly worked. They've been running the quick pitch all afternoon. They started the same play, and the quarterback just kept coming. Uh, they caught Auburn. Auburn was in a blitz. Charles Woods, the, the linebacker, was in a blitz. He had started coming. And, uh, he just read it a little bit late. Tech made a great play, and Auburn's been encouraging them all day, and they've just really given Tech a lot of incentive right now. 14-13. Extra point attempt, a big one coming up, and it is through there. Johnny Smith hits it. Auburn 14, Georgia Tech 14, and the Georgia Tech coaches to our left are smiling at the moment. 
Timeout on the field. 13.43 to go in the game. The score, Auburn 14, Georgia Tech 14. Right back with more Auburn football. Tonight's Auburn football game is a feature presentation of Video Sports Network. The coverage of this game is transmitted via satellite to over 200 cable companies in 33 different states, a potential audience of 12 million viewers. If you're an advertiser and would like to present your sales message to your immediate area, simply contact the cable company you're watching now. 13-43. Left in the game, tied at 14. Let's take another look at the touchdown. Let's do, because it was... Well executed play, Pat. Well, it really was. This gentleman is a former quarterback. He throws the ball very well. Peoples is all alone. He just has to reach up and grab it. He was. In fact, about two or three years ago in the Sugar Bowl, Alabama scored against Notre Dame on that very play. Richard Todd, I believe, caught one in a similar type situation. Yeah, I know all the folks at Towers High School awfully fine. They saw a lot of that when Steve was a quarterback at Towers. There is Sam DeJarnett on the goal line. And, and, fellas, that's what you have when you've got a back in the game that's a former quarterback who can throw the football. You just, you're just wide open. Like An added dimension, certainly. Ron Rice will kick it off. DeJarnett, five yards deep. Sam will run it out. 10, 15, 17-yard line. If he had to do it over, he wouldn't, I don't think. Brought down by Mitch Ashley. Well, we've been talking about Sam wanting him to run one out. Maybe he hurt, he hurt us, and he was determined to run that one out when maybe he shouldn't have, but uh, it's kind of put Auburn in a hole. They need to make a good drive. They've got 13 minutes and 38 seconds uh, left in the fourth quarter. There's plenty of time. They just need to make a drive and not fumble the ball or, or throw a pass in a second. Two tight ends. Franklin, wide receiver. Thomas, the quarterback. Going for Franklin, and it is just a little long, incomplete. And good coverage put on him out there by the cornerback, there's number a, 28, Ken Taylor. There's a flag on the play, and I don't know whether one of Auburn's offensive linemen might have gotten down field too early or not, but uh, Auburn's walking back like it's against them. Well, you just can't make these crucial mistakes in the clutch and expect to win football games, and Auburn has made... A couple of them that have been extremely costly. The officials conferring. That's Lance Skelton, number 43. He's a six-foot junior from Tacoa, Georgia. Scott, I really liked the Auburn's idea on that play. I've been wondering all afternoon when they were going to try to get Byron Franklin deep because Georgia Tech's cornerback has really been coming up hard and forcing it. And uh, the safety, I, with where he's lined up, he just can't get over there to cover. And I think if Auburn comes back to that play, they might have a chance to score on it uh, later on. We didn't fool him that time, that's for sure. You were right on your call, Pat, for the penalty. Franklin to the left. Thomas, 15. Still driving in there and gets down up to the 18-yard line. Wally Cawthon, the nose guard, finally made the stop. That's some determined running on the part of Charles Thomas. Got it back to the original line of scrimmage and by the hardest, I might add, as he fakes up the middle on the option, turns it upfield. He's hit here once by a Tech defender, got away, fights off a tackle, and picks up a couple of extra yards on the play. Denny Anthony and Ed West in double tight ends. Franklin to the right. Thomas slips and falls. They are in a part of the playing field that I'm sure has to be uh, rather slippery. James Brooks did the same thing. Apparently difficult to keep your footing when you're trying to make that cutback. You're right, Scott. Uh, James Brooks earlier in the, uh, I believe it was late in the second quarter, he slipped down in a similar place, so there might be a bad spot on the field right there. Atkins in with a play. Anthony out. Third down and ten. The Georgia Tech bunch on the far side stands up trying to make some noise. Brooks. Brooks cannot get away. A flag is down over there. Flag is down, so hold it. There's a flag down. I, I believe it's against Auburn, Scott, and 
I'm sure Tech will decline it and not give Auburn a chance to, to make the first down over. This is going to be holding. Holding oh. against Georgia Tech. What a big break for Auburn. That's going to give them an automatic first down. Here at 12.09 left in the ball game, a huge break. Well, we can see it again on the replay here. You don't see too much defensive holding. That's the call in this case. Brooks taking the pass from Thomas. Tries to get away, hit very hard. Down he goes, and no indication of the hole there. Well, we couldn't see it on the replay, but I believe what happened, uh, the flanker who was out of the play uh, was being held by the, the cornerback from Georgia Tech. That's a big break for Auburn. That's a much-needed first down. And it gets the Tigers out of the hole. Well, that's the first real mistake Tech's made all day. First and 10 of the Auburn 36-yard line. Double tight ends again. Franklin is the lone wide receiver. Thomas, it's loose. Brooks does a wise thing and just goes back and falls on it at the 19. Now you talk about something that could have been costly. That could have been extremely costly, and James appears to be a bit shaken up. Well, Charles Thomas really got tattooed. What it was is a counter option, as we see here on the replay. He's stepping one way and then coming back, and the defensive end is blitzing, and he, when Charles turns around, he's right in his face and causes a bad pitch. So it was really a, a, a good play by Sam Kelly. Could have been called. 11-19. In the game. Second down, 27. Brooks. Brooks stopped at the 20. Georgia Tech's defense began to rise to the occasion. Wally Cawthon, the nose guard, and on the stop. Georgia Tech's winning the battle of the line of scrimmage right now. Well, they are. They, they're sensing that victory, you know, and they are really playing as hard as they possibly can. And Auburn has had a couple of mistakes go against them that's put them in the hole, and they need to. Get a big play to get out of. Third down and 25. Two receivers to the left. Being pressured some, they'll have to come back the other way. Got some room, needs a block. Can't get enough of one across the 26 yard line. He's hauled down, and Auburn will have to kick it away. Wally Kauf on at nose guard, in on the coverage again. The Tech defense really starting to rise to the occasion, as you said, Scott. And, of course, they had Auburn in a fourth down or third down and very long yardage. And uh, they they had the receivers well covered, just nowhere for Charles Thomas to go. Those folks clad in gold and white on the far side. They're stand having a party. Cheer. Yeah, they stand to cheer that defense. Alan Bollinger will check in. Ted Thurston is back. High kick, Thurston calling for the fair catch. Tech with good field position at the 42-yard line with 9.47 remaining in the game. 14-14, a pause in the action, and we'll be right back after this brief timeout. Say, Muhammad Ali, have you heard about the... 9.47, left here at Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn 14, Georgia Tech 14, Yellow Jackets with a football at their 42. High formation receivers, top and bottom. Westbrook up to the 45. Jack Westbrook, freshman from Atlanta. Hal Johnson and Vernon Blackard in on the stop. Here's a situation where I would imagine Tech wants to keep the ball as long as they can, Pat. Of course, they'll take anything they can get in the way of a score, but they'd like to grind out some yardage if they possibly can. Well, if they could make a long, sustained drive and use up five or six minutes on the, the clock and get some points out of it, it'd kind of put Auburn in the hole because they'd get the ball back with somewhere around two and a half or three minutes to go. So I'm sure that's what they're thinking. But if they could get a, uh, a long pass or a long run and score in two seconds, I imagine they'd take that also. I think whoever scores next is, is going to uh, definitely be in the driver's seat. Glenn Etheridge a tight end shaken up on the play and he's being assisted to the sidelines. And the injury bug continues to follow Bill Curry and Georgia Tech. They said earlier this week they've never seen anything like it. Just been just plagued with injuries. Picked up two. Second out and eight. Rank to the left. People's rolling that way. Incomplete. Intended for Quintero over the middle. 
Ken Luke, free safety, was in on the coverage. Well, he may have heard the approaching footsteps of Marshall Riley, who was bearing down on him, and he underthrew the pass a little bit and got nailed just as he got the ball away. Well, he did, and that's really the first pass that uh, Peoples has not really just put right on the money. Their flanker rank may have been open out in the out in the flat there, fellas, on that pass. Over on the same side, Quintero and Chadwick, the wide receivers. Third down and eight. Now the Auburn crowd trying to make them make a mistake. People. It is incomplete. Fine defensive play by Clifford Tony again over on the far side. Clifford Tony is establishing himself as one of the premier defensive backs in the Southeastern Conference. You see why here on the replay. Now Peoples has plenty of time to get the ball away. The pass not that poorly thrown. Peoples is with him step for step and almost moved in there and made the interception. Daryl Wilkes will drop back now for on this punt return. Daryl standing at his 10. Pierce, Jeff Pierce will attempt to get it away. Ball off the side of his foot and some pressure. And will be down inside the Auburn 20. Daryl Thomas over to down the football at the Auburn 17 yard line. And the Auburn defense gets a hand as they trot off the field. Tech took over in good field position, but the defense rose to the occasion. Yes, they did. Did a real good job. Now let's see what the offense can do because Auburn needs to put some points on the board with nine minutes to go in the game. Joe Sullivan at quarterback. Willis and Brooks in the backfield. Brooks. Up to the 24. Lance Skelton in on the stop. Mark the ball at the 23 yard line. Scott James Brooks looks like a little tired, like he's a little tired. He's asked for some help. Uh, Sam DeJarnette, the freshman from Selma, is going in. Brooks coming off the field. There you see James. James has played a lot of football today. He's carried the ball a number of times. Looks like he may be favoring that ankle just slightly also. Sullivan with an audible. DeJarnette up to the 25-yard line. will bring up third down and a couple. Lance Skelton, linebacker, in on the stop. 8-13 remaining in the game. The clock continues to run. 14-14. Auburn has two timeouts left. Had to use one earlier in the half. Georgia Tech with all three. Franklin goes to the left. Edwards to the right. Willis and DeJarnett in the backfield. Joe Sullivan with the count. DeJarnett. First down. Scott, there's my man. Sam really made a good run there. He needed three yards, and it was a simple power play, and he just runs it up in there and, and makes the necessary yards for the first down. He was hit, and he dragged off a tackler and uh, got that yardage, too. Rob Horton, reserve linebacker from Metter, Georgia, brought him down. Franklin to the left. Atkins to the right. Same backfield. Oh. Movement. Willis left too soon. The ball is loose. DeJarnett falls on it. Tech had some movement on defense that caused the movement, I think, Pat. Well, it did, and it looked like Joe was changing the play. Tech's been jumping around all day, and uh, are they going to let the play stand? It sounded like the whistle blew before. We That's can see it again here, Pat. See exactly what happened. Just premature movement on the part of the Auburn offense. Chester Willis move before the snap of the ball. They may let this uh, loss stand. Yes, yeah. they will. They yeah. have they have let it stand, and Auburn's dug themselves in a hole again, and they keep doing it. And eventually, Tech's going to take advantage of it. Second and 23. Back at the Auburn 17. D. Jarnett breaks out of the eye and splits. Sullivan to pass. Incomplete and almost intercepted. Just got it over the hands of uh, one of those on-rushing linemen. Number 56, Robert Jarris. Remember Thad Jarris, University of Kentucky basketball player in the 60s? Same name. I don't know if they're related or not. That one could have been tough. Well, it was. It was a, a sprint out pass, and uh, they were just covered to the wide side. Auburn about now, the only chance they've got to complete something is to jump something off the back underneath it. Hope that he can break a tackle and run. Joe, plenty of time. Down the middle for Franklin. 
complete. Short of the first down. Byron Franklin showed some courage there catching in a crowd. He really got thrilled when he caught the ball. It's going to be short of the first down by a couple of yards as Lawrence Lowe bared down on him. Now Joe had plenty of time to uh, throw the ball, got it away to Franklin. He was open and really got drilled just as he caught it. But Auburn's going to have to kick it away. It's a good play on both of them's part. Joe stood in there and threw the ball well. He had some time. The offensive line did a good job. And Franklin makes an excellent catch. Thurston will drop back to take the punt for Tech. Allen Bollinger will attempt to get it away. Tech's loading up the line. Gets it off. Thurston calling for the fair catch. At the Tech 30, the Yellow Jackets will have 6-14 remaining in the game. We're all tied. Auburn 14 and Georgia Tech 14. Pause in the action, and we'll be right back after this brief timeout. Re-elect President. 6-14, excuse me, Pat, 6-14 remaining in the game, 14-14. I was just going to say, I just looked up the clock. There's 6-14 left. Auburn and Tech, both of them are going to have the, the ball two more times at best, and uh, somebody needs to, to take charge of the game right now. Peoples to Westbrook across the 30 up to the 33-yard line. Well, I was going to ask, pardon me, Scott, I was going to ask Pat Sullivan, when you expect to see uh, Georgia Tech start going to the air a little more? Well, uh, I would imagine that they'll go to it on this down here. Uh, they run the ball. They, they only picked up two yards, and uh, they need to get something moving, so I, I expect them to play right here. Play action fake. Intercepted. Intercepted by Ken Lou. Ken Lou down to the 11. It went right out of the hand. Westbrook. Jack Westbrook out of the backfield and went right out of his hands. A bizarre play, as you'll see on the replay. Okay, Peoples with plenty of time to throw, trying to throw under the defense. It bounces off Westbrook's shoulder pads, and there's Ken Luke right behind him. Takes it down the sidelines. Auburn's in business. First and goal at the 10-yard line. 5.36 remaining in the game. All tied. Ken Luke. After that ball bounced off of Westbrook's hands, right in the loops, down to the 11-yard line, power eye, Tim James, James Brooks, and Willie Huntley. Thomas, the quarterback. Thomas, inside the 10 to the 9. Steve Mooney, the linebacker, in on the stop. I don't think we can expect Tech to fold their tent here. They have played a courageous football game, and I expect them to be tough for these final nine, ten yards here. Well, they, Auburn's got their work cut out for them. Jim, they really have. They've played hard all day long, and the ball on the interception was really pretty well thrown. Ken Luke was very alert when it bounced out of his uh, Westbrook's hands and picked it up and ran it down. Picked up two, second and eight. Brooks up and over down to the six or seven-yard line. Dwayne Wood in on the stop. Georgia Tech came in here, heavy underdogs, and they have really battled. Okay, we see James Brooks hurtling the line, a la Joe Cribbs. Picks up two or three yards on the play. Well, that's just a power off formation that Auburn's gotten in with James Brooks as a tailback. And he really didn't have much of a hole there, and he just dove and, and made the two or three yards that he got. Third down and six at the seven. Al Del Greco ready on the sidelines if needed. Power eye. Thomas. Thomas stopped at the five. Four yards short of the first down. Marvin Diet in the game, and in will come the freshman Al Del Greco to try to put Auburn on top with 4-11 left here in the ball game. Now Al had a tough night down at LSU last week. Let's see what he does here in this pressure situation. Under four minutes to go in the game, and Auburn definitely needs these points. It goes without saying. Ball is at, uh, will be set down at the 11. It will be a 21-yard attempt. It is good. The freshman Del Greco sticks it through from 21 yards, and the Tigers take a three-point lead. Scott, I know he's a happy young man uh, being a freshman and coming in here and playing in front of 50 or 55,000 people. And, uh, possibly kicking the winning field goal. He's got to be extremely happy right now. Now the Auburn defense will be put to a test. 3.45 remaining in the game. J. 
James Brooks, a two-yard touchdown run. Charles Thomas, a 23-yard pass to Byron Franklin, the Del Greco field goal. Field goal. Jack Westbrook, three-yard run, and the halfback pass for the touchdown for Tech. There are the deep men. There is Bernard Stover, number 38. Dave Blanks will get set to kick it off. Georgia Tech has all three timeouts remaining. So, fellas, there's still plenty of time. Well, there is, and, of course, I believe it's Stouffer back there, number 38 for Georgia Tech. He's been close to breaking a couple of them already today. Shorter kick this time, coming down to Stouffer at the 12-yard line. Stouffer He's got an alley. Up to the 30-yard line. Marker on the play, Scott. I think uh, I think there was a little extra curricular activity against Georgia Tech, and that's really going to hurt him because uh, he had brought it back out to the 30, and I think there's going to be a personal foul against Georgia Tech. And, going to uh, move the ball back inside the 20. That's the call. Takes away the Tech field position. Georgia Tech under new head coach Bill Curry. Bill Curry is a, is a fine, fine gentleman. He has his team ready here this afternoon. Nose to nose all day long. Auburn by three, 17-14. Georgia Tech will have to go 85 yards. Ted no, Peoples. No doubt what they do now. Ted Peoples, the quarterback, has caught a touchdown pass here today. The Auburn crowd, the student body beginning to stand up and make the noise. Peoples complete across the 30 up to the 32-yard line. Well, that was really a, a good pass by Peoples then. It was a, just a quick slant uh, pass to his flanker, and uh, he just a quick two-step drop and watch him deliver the ball right between the two linebackers, and uh, that's just really a, a good play. I, Bill Curry, I'm sure, probably got that play from Bart Starr when he was at Green Bay because that's the play that Bart Starr used to throw to Max McGee all the time. Peoples back again. Plenty of time. Going long. Quintera out of bounds. Quintera had stepped out of bounds over on the far side. Uh, Clifford Tony and the Georgia Tech coaches are a little bit upset over there. Clifford Tony, when Quintera started down the sideline, uh, really popped him out of bounds and uh, took him out of the play. 314 remaining in the ball game. Auburn 17, Georgia Tech 14. Second down and 10. Yellow Jackets for the football at their 31, just across their 31. Leon Chadwick out to the left. Jerry Beasley goes out on him. Auburn in the 4-3. Good protection. It's complete to Cantera up to midfield, and the Yellow Jackets are driving. Pat, I am extremely impressed with Ted Peoples. He's just as cool as he can be back there. Well, he, he had really plenty of time to throw, and he drilled it. He really is, and, and what it is is the split ends coming on what we used to call a center pattern. They got the tight end and the flanker. Uh, it, it's kind of like a crossing pattern is what it amounts to, and the, the split end comes across at about a 15-yard depth, and what a good throw by Pete. Midfield first down, the clock a factor, 2.51 to go in the game and running. Tech with all three timeouts, Peoples, Peoples to Heggs. Driven out of bounds after a pickup of about six yards. Clifford Tony knocked him out. So they stop the clock with 244. Scott, this is just a, a simple quick out. And what it is, the same three-step drop. And uh, Flacker goes down and runs about a five-yard out pattern. And a good throw. There's a flag out on the field. Looks like there's going to be a penalty against Auburn. And if it is, it's going to get close to Georgia Tech's field goal range. And I think it could be unsportsmanlike conduct or something of that nature. It was a dead ball penalty. They threw the flag after the play was long over. And I have no idea what happened, but I'm feared, uh, afraid rather, it's against Auburn. Looks like now maybe they're uh, saying that there was no, no penalty. There's Peoples. Scott Auburn's been strictly on this series of plays. Have been playing uh, nothing but uh, 
pass defense. I'd like to see them come with a blitz right now and see if they could get kind of confuse Georgia Tech. Picked up six yards, second down and four. Plenty of time again. Intercepted by Chris Martin. Chris Martin, the middle linebacker. Intended for Westbrook. This is really a good play by Chris Martin. Uh, what it is is people starts back, and it's kind of like a little bootleg pass. He's got the, his receivers coming across the field, and Chris Martin just stays in there. What a catch he makes there. A one-hand grab. It's interceptions. Ken Luke intercepted a pass. It set up the go-ahead field goal, and Chris Martin has stopped the tech drive with that acrobatic interception. He hauled it in with one hand. Joe Sullivan with 2.35 remaining in the game. Auburn will try to eat up the clock. Sullivan changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Brooks. Brooks cannot get away. Loses Wally Koth on the nose guard there. Georgia Tech will use one of their timeouts. Well, they literally tore the, the jersey off of James Brooks then. Thomas Coffey's coming in to replace him. 2.23 remaining in the game. 17-14, Auburn on top. And don't forget that Friday night, November 7th, Video Sports Network will present live coverage of the Ken Norton Randy Cobb heavyweight boxing match. Classic battle featuring two straight ahead punchers in a match that experts say will not go the distance. We'll see. It should be a good one. You can see all the action over most of these same cable outlets live via satellite Friday night, November 7th, 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central on Video Sports Network. Scott, you're not going to be like Howard Cosell and do boxing <laughs> too, are you? I think I'll leave that to, to some folks who know what they're talking about. <laughs> okay. Joe Sullivan has the play from the sideline. 2.23, Tech with two timeouts. Lost five on the play, second down and 15. Franklin splits to the right. Huntley and Brooks in the eye. Brooks across the 40. To the 41-42, Dwayne Wood in on the stop. Clock ticking at 2.14, and Tech will take a timeout. I think, yep, Tech will take their second timeout, so they will have one timeout left. And it'll be a third down and about 10. So Tech must stop Auburn on this play, Pat, to have a shot at this thing. Well, if they, I think it's smart on Tech's part uh, calling the timeout. Auburn's run two simple handoff plays. They have not run wide and therefore not use much time on the clock. So Tech went ahead and took the timeouts instead of giving Auburn uh, time to get back to the huddle. And if they stop them here, they're going to get the ball back with uh, just under two minutes. Here you see the Auburn sideline. David Jordan, freshman tight end. You saw a shot of Joe Sullivan talking to Alex Gibbs and Doug Barfield. Jordan will come into the game. Third down and 10. What do you try here, Pat? Well, of course, I really believe Tech's going to be blitzing here and coming after and trying to force Auburn into a bad play. Uh, maybe a sprint out tight pass and, and, and instruct the quarterback, if he doesn't have it, to just throw the ball out of bounds so there's no chance of interception. And then if they do get, get the playoff, they, they might pick up that first half. Franklin to the right. Huntley and Brooks in the backfield. Sullivan looking for Franklin. Joe with some room. 50. First down across the 45-yard line, Joe Sullivan. Well, this was a heady play on Joe's part. What it is, they were faking a pitch to the uh, weak side, and then he, he, he rolled strong and was trying to hit Byron Franklin deep. And uh, he, when he wasn't there, he just kept it for the first down. So it was a heady play on his part. Big, big third down conversion. Sullivan has him set. 146, the clock running. Blitz. Brooks. Across the 40. Drives his way down to the 36-yard line. Lawrence Lowell, the free safety, had to bring him down. That's really determined running by James Brooks. And I believe Willie Huntley, if we got it on replay here, uh, I believe Willie Huntley makes a great block on the blitzing linebacker. He does. 49 right there. And, and that's what enabled James Brooks to, to pick up the yardage. Franklin to the left, Huntley and Brooks in the eye. 114, 113, clock rolling, tech down by three, one timeout left. 
Brooks drives down to the 31-yard line, 30-yard line. Rob Horton, reserve linebacker, and on the stop. Well, it's just a quick toss, and uh, James Brooks picks up the first down on his own, and I believe Tech's taking their last time out now, so really all Auburn has to do is, is fall on the ball three times, and, and the game is theirs. Pat, we want to thank all the many, many people who have sent letters into VSN about the ball games. Please continue to do so with suggestions and comments. Thanks to uh, Joe Lacey from Meridian, Mississippi, sent in a letter. New Orleans, Louisiana, Howard Leach said hello. Jim and Ruth and Jack Stewart are watching out in Belton, Texas. They dropped us a line. Thank you, and keep those cards and letters coming. Pat, I saw something on the sideline after Joe Sullivan had made the big run that I loved. Charles Thomas, who they're alternating, there's been a lot of controversy. Thomas had his hands raised up in the air, jumping up and down. And, you know, it, this it's a difficult situation. These fellows have handled it very, very well. Scott, after this play, I want to get back and comment on that. Brooks tripped up. James, James was tripped up a little bit there. But to get back to about Charles and Joe, uh, there's been several things written in the local newspapers about controversy and, and race and stuff like this. And I called Joe uh, last week or week before and just asked him the question point blank. And he said that uh, the thing that was keeping Auburn together right now was the camaraderie that the players had. I know they're all very close. And uh, it's evident by, by the way Charles Thomas feels about Joe. And I know he feels the same way about Charles. And this is what makes any kind of athletics uh, fun and and important to me is the relationships you build with your other teammates. At last play, Brooks up the middle. Only 18 seven, seconds, 17, 16 left. Auburn will hang on for a hard-fought win here this afternoon, barring a major miracle. Brooks down to the 25, and that will do it. Marvin Diet in on the stop. Auburn has won 17-14 in the 83rd meeting between Auburn and Georgia Tech. And Pat, Bill Curry's bunch came in here despite being heavy underdogs and played them tough. Well, they really did. Uh, as we talked about early in the game, they, they came in with everything to gain, nothing to lose, so to speak. They, they blitzed uh, continuously all afternoon. They jumped their, their defensive linemen around. They came up with a few razzle-dazzle plays on offense. And uh, they certainly have nothing to be ashamed of because they, they really fought hard all day. There's the final score, Auburn 17, Georgia Tech 14. Now let's throw it down to just outside the Auburn locker room with Jim Fife and Auburn head coach Doug Barfield. Coach Barfield, you had them all the way, no question. <laughs> no, I'll tell you, that was a dog fight. I'd like to compliment Coach Curry and, and the Georgia Tech staff and their players. They've played hard. Uh, they've improved a great deal. We told everybody they had last week. However, I don't think we played uh, – well, but we didn't quit. We fought, and maybe we needed to win a close one like that where we had to really fight for it. I thought our defense uh, gave a lot of ground in the first half and let them control the ball, but we came back the second half when we, and we made good adjustments and, and shut them down pretty good, and they never lost their poise. You chose to run the ball instead of throw it against Tech, and a lot of people have thrown the ball against Georgia Tech this year. Well, I think the ones that have, if you look back, they, they did the first half, and they came back like Tennessee did in the fourth quarter to win it, they lined up and went at them, or they were going to lose the ball game. And uh, we, we wanted to maybe prevent that from happening and, and go after them early and hopefully wear them down. Uh, but uh, they changed that thing because they got the momentum in the first half by keeping the ball on us. And then we had to come back and, and get it back the second half. But, you know, that's it's going how it turns out. Uh, they, they're they're a, an improved football team, and I want to give them a lot of credit, but I also want to give our people some credit, too, for hanging in there and winning one. It maybe wasn't so pretty, and we didn't play well. Now we can get ready for, for the Mississippi State and the rest of the year. What's it going to take in the state game to win it? Well, we're going to have to improve uh, all the way around. There's no question about that. Uh, I, I thought we, you know, played well in spurts, but consistency. We're going to have to get a, a great overall effort from our people offensively and defensively if we're going to beat Mississippi State. Congratulations on a great victory, and good luck next week. Well, thank you. Uh, we'll take them all, and uh, certainly we're proud of our players for winning. That's it from here. Now let's go back upstairs to Scott. Auburn 17, Georgia Tech 14. Pat, let's take a look at the highlights from this afternoon's game. Auburn took the opening kickoff, marched 80 yards, and James Brooks goes over from two yards out. Well, it, it 
just a simple power play from the power eye, and the offensive line did a good job of knocking uh, Georgia Tech back, and James just stuck it in there for a touchdown to give Auburn a, a, a good drive and a 7 to nothing lead. Georgia Tech came back, play just underway in the second quarter, and freshman Jack Westbrook will take this pitch from Peoples and go over from three yards out to tie it at seven. It's just a quick pitch, Scott, and uh, Westbrook's makes a real determined run. You can see he starts about the two or three-yard line diving for that end zone. He's very determined, and as you can see right here, he's a very happy young man. And that's the way the first half ended, Auburn 7 and Georgia Tech 7. And we go to third quarter action. That's Charles Thomas at quarterback. He'll roll to his left and hit Byron Franklin, 23-yard touchdown pass to take a 14-7 lead. Well, it was a real well-devised play. Uh, what it was, Charles Thomas has is is got the Auburn offense in a slot formation with Byron Franklin and Tim Davis. Tim Davis runs a post pattern to take the secondary man out, and Byron Franklin runs an out and up and just outruns the Tech defensive back, and Charles Thomas makes an outstanding throw for a touchdown. The Yellow Jackets would not quit. 13-43 left in the game. Watch Peoples as he will pitch to his... Well, here we first we see an interception here by Clifford Tony before we get I th to that. I think that was uh, uh, this play here was, uh, of course, before Georgia Tech scored, but uh, it was the same play that, that Auburn had scored on, on the, the, the slot formation where the flanker ran a post and the out and up by the, the inside slot man, and Clifford Tony ran it just, read it just perfectly and came up with the interception. All right, Charles Thomas again at quarterback. Boy, this was just an outstanding play by Tex linebacker. He was blitzing, and he got to Charles Thomas before he expected him and, and really tattooed him there and it forced a fumble and gave Tech outstanding field position, Scott. All right, now we'll take a look at the little halfback pass. There's Steve Henderson, Decatur, Georgia, former quarterback in high school. Peoples, the quarterback, rolling out all alone for the touchdown. Uh, just an outstanding uh, razzle-dazzle play. There's another look at it. Peoples comes out all alone. Nobody, nobody picks him up when he comes out of the backfield. Outstanding play on, on Tech's part. They had it well devised. They had been running that sweep. In fact, they scored on it earlier in the first half. Started the same action, and the tailback pulls up and throws it to the quarterback. And what high school did you say he was from, Scott? Uh, Towers High School, I think. That's uh, probably where Where is at. that? That's somewhere in Decatur, Georgia. Okay. All right, here we go. Tied at 14, late in the game. Peoples will try to hit Jack Westbrook off his hands and Ken Luke with a big interception. Well, this was probably the, the single most important play in the game. And uh, Westbrook was open, and Peoples made a pretty good throw. It slipped through his hand. Ken Luke very alertly picked the ball off and ran it down to give Auburn good field position. Al Del Greco, the freshman, will come in to attempt a 21-yard field goal. And Al will stick it right through there, and that's your ball game. Well, I'm sure Al's a very happy young man to be able to make that and give Auburn a, a big win over their rival, Georgia Tech. And, of course, Tech was driving. They were not through yet. Late, late in the ball game, only a minute or so left. And Peoples will try to hit a receiver over the middle. And look at this interception by Chris Martin. Well, that was a great catch, as we saw. And uh, Chris makes a couple of catches like that, and he might find himself out as a flanker. <laughs> All right, we'll see the final stats here this afternoon. And Auburn with 287 yards rushing, and they did have a big day on the ground. James Brooks came into this game needing uh, over 200 yards to become only the fourth man in NCAA history to gain 200 yards in three consecutive games, and James did not make it as the Georgia Tech defense was able to shut it down. But Auburn a winner here this afternoon, 17-14. to a couple of the defensive stars of the game, Ken Luke with a big interception to set up the Al Del Greco field goal and Chris Martin to thwart the last attempt by Georgia Tech. And Jim Fife is down with Ken and Chris. Well, two big plays instrumental in today's 17-14 to 14 victory over Georgia Tech were made by the two gentlemen who are with me now, Ken Luke and Chris Martin. Ken, you made a big, big interception late in the ball game. The ball popped out of the receiver's hands and right into your hands. What would you think when you caught the ball? Well, I really wanted to score, but I was just fortunate to, uh, to catch the ball. Uh, just uh, read the play, and that's just one of those breaks that we've been waiting for, and uh, felt like it was time to get one, and we got it. This Tech bunch wasn't as easy as a lot of people thought they'd be. Well, I don't think it was that they weren't that easy. We just didn't play to our, our capability, and uh, we're going to come back and have a good week of practice and 
get out all the wrinkles, and we'll be ready next week for Mississippi State. You played a lot of defensive secondary this year. Do you like the position? I sure do. I really enjoy it. I, you know, I switch from quarterback, and I enjoy back, being back there and being on my own. And It's like being quarterback on defense, and I really love it. Played a great game. Congratulations Thank to you. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Ken Luke, and, of course, number 43 is Chris Martin, who had a timely interception late in the game. That was a great play you made. Yeah, it was pretty good. They had ran the tight end before that, and I had missed it by about, about three, you know, three feet. And I know I thought they was going to run again, and they did. And I just came over and caught the ball. You know, uh, Peoples, the quarterback for Georgia Tech, threw the ball very well. Of course, Kelly was their starting quarterback and was rated one of the top passers in the South. But Peoples did a great job, kept you guys hopping, didn't he? Yeah. He, uh, he didn't scare us. I know we was going to win the ball game all along. We just, you know, took our time and just, you know, we know the big play was coming, and so half and I had to make it. Well, we uh, are all delighted it was you that did make it. Congratulations on a great victory, and let's go get Mississippi State next all week. All right, then. Thank you. Right. Chris Martin and Ken Luke, who were very instrumental in today's Auburn victory. Now let's go back up to Scott Miller. Thanks, Jim. Pat Sullivan, that about wraps it up from here. Auburn 17-14, Georgia Tech came down, and we had ourselves a good ball game. Well, Georgia Tech really brought it to Auburn today, as we, we talked earlier in the show. Uh, they had everything to gain, nothing to lose. They certainly played that way. They played their hearts out. They've certainly got nothing to be ashamed of. Anytime Auburn beats Tech, it's a good win. And uh, they've got, Auburn's got Mississippi State next week in Jackson, and uh, they're certainly going to have their hands full there. And uh, it ought to be a good one next week. We've enjoyed working with you again. You've evened your record at 1-1 now. Yeah, well, that's, that's right. The Tennessee game wasn't too good, but it, it sure is a pleasure to work, especially when we win. And we look forward to it. Uh, a couple of big games down toward the end of the year. Right, Georgia and Alabama, and uh, maybe Auburn's going to have it all put together by then, and we'll have two outstanding games. All right, thank you, Pat. Don't forget, next Tuesday night, 7.30 Eastern Time, 6.30 Central Time, Auburn and Mississippi State right here on VSN. So, from Jordan-Hare Stadium, for Jim Fife and Pat Sullivan, this is Scott Miller. So long, everyone. Auburn University Football 1980 has been a feature presentation of Video Sports Network.